Fire compartmentation plays a vital role in the fire safety of any building by ensuring safe refuge and evacuation of all its occupants and providing suitable safe access for firefighters. It is a well-established successful fire safety measure that has been used for generations. Compartmentation also protects the essential content and fabric of the building by limiting the spread of fire. However, for any building to function, it is inevitable that a myriad of services such as gas, plumbing and electrical or data cabling will crisscross the building, both horizontally and vertically. And in the process, these must pass through fire compartment walls and floors. It is therefore critical that where such services breach the fire compartment, the compartmentation needs to provide a level of fire resistance at least equal to the fire resistance of the wall or floor through which they are passing. It is also inevitable that throughout the life of any building, many follow-on trades will need to modify existing service penetrations or create new ones through fire compartment walls and floors, for example, to update data cabling or to install new ventilation and plumbing systems. How these service openings are sealed up or fire stopped is vital to ensure the continued ability of the compartment wall or floor to resist spread of fire and limit the passage of hot gases and toxic smoke. Identifying appropriate products and systems is therefore essential to ensuring that the resultant installation will be fit for purpose. Of equal importance, those responsible for the installation of such fire-stopping measures should be able to demonstrate competency to undertake this essential role. Inappropriate selection and or badly installed fire-stopping systems can significantly increase the risk to life safety and damage to the fabric of the building. One such example, which is increasingly being observed, relates to the inappropriate use of so-called fire-rated polyurethane, PU foams. There are two issues. Firstly, they are sometimes sold on the basis of their performance in less severe reaction to fire tests. Such foams may be coloured to indicate a performance, such as UK Class O, German DIN 4102, B1 or Euro Class C. These performances are no indicator of their ability to seal openings in compartment walls and floors with cables or pipes passing through them. Any installations fire stopped with a PU foam, whose performance has only been demonstrated using a reaction to fire test, or which only claim a reaction to fire class, should not be used for fire stopping. These must be replaced with a fire stopping product or system which has been successfully proven for the end use application in question. Secondly, although they are sometimes correctly sold on the basis of their performance in more severe fire resistance tests, many are used outside the scope of their tested performance. So, unless the fire test data clearly states otherwise, such foams are generally not suitable for use in large apertures passing through a compartment wall or floor. It is essential, as with any fire stopping or fire sealing product, to ensure that the fire test data relates to the intended end use. The following sequence shows a fire test undertaken by Exova Warrington Fire, which demonstrates how correctly installed fire stopping can effectively hold back smoke and fire. It also serves to demonstrate how incorrectly chosen and installed fire stopping will fail, allowing smoke and flames to quickly penetrate a compartment wall. The following scenarios were tested. Cable trays. A shows a foam inappropriately used to fire stop a cable tray penetration. B is a similar cable tray penetration sealed using a foam with a proven fire resistance performance for this type of application. Plastic pipes. In the case of plastic pipes, it is essential that the fire sealing system closes down the opening through the pipe as it melts. H shows a foam inappropriately used to fire stop around a plastic pipe with no means of closing the opening. C shows an identical plastic pipe protected with a correctly installed fire resisting intumescent fire stop pipe collar. Single cables. F shows a foam inappropriately used to fire stop a single cable. D. The same cable fire stopped but sealed using a foam with a proven fire resistance performance for this type of application.
Bundles of cables. E shows a foam used to firestop a cable bundle. G shows a cable bundle protected with a sleeve device of proven fire resistance performance. The test rig is loaded onto the furnace and the test commenced. From the outset of the test, penetrating smoke is apparent from a number of configurations under test. By 1 minute 40 seconds, smoke continues to be released from the cable trays and the inappropriately used foam-filled single cable and cable bundle. A, B, E and F. After 2 minutes, smoke can be seen escaping from around the pipe, H, protected with inappropriately used foam. At 5 minutes, there is significant smoke escape from pipe H and from the single cable, penetration F, as both fail. In the absence of a pipe closure, such as an intumescent wrap, the foam around the pipe has burnt away before the plastic pipe has melted. By 7 minutes into the test, significant thick and acrid smoke can be seen escaping from the inappropriately sealed cable tray. By comparison, the correctly fire-stopped cable tray is showing only a little smoke escape caused by some burning of the cable sheaths. By 7 minutes 20 seconds, the inappropriately used foam around cable tray A is glowing. And by 8 minutes, it is clear that all the systems using inappropriately used foams are close to failure. In fact, the cable bundle fails at 8 minutes 20 seconds and the cable tray at 9 minutes 50 seconds. The flames of the furnace can clearly be seen through the gaps left where the foam has burnt away. So in less than 10 minutes, all of the fire-stopping examples where foam was inappropriately used in a situation for which it was not designed and tested have completely failed in a compartment wall designed to survive a one-hour fire test. Compare this to the correctly installed systems. At 10 minutes, these are performing as designed, with no flames or smoke escaping from these systems. In fact, all of the successful systems have been correctly tested for fire resistance in such situations by a nationally accredited test laboratory and have demonstrated that they will achieve one hour of fire resistance. It is worthwhile to look at the tested specimens from inside and outside the furnace at the end of the test. Take the example of the cable tray. The inappropriately used foam offered little fire resistance when used to fill the large gap around the cable tray. It burnt away completely, allowing smoke and flames to spread along the cable sheaths. However, the appropriately tested foam used to protect an identical cable tray has remained intact, preventing fire spread through the service opening in the compartment wall. The same situation can be seen with the single cable and the cable bundle tests. In the pipe tests, the intumescent within the pipe collar in the correctly installed system has expanded to crush the melting pipe and fill the hole, limiting the spread of flames and smoke. Whereas with the inappropriately used foam-protected pipe, the foam has burnt away and in the absence of an intumescent closing device, such as an intumescent wrap or collar, the pipe has melted, leaving a gap through which flame and smoke is able to spread. This short video serves to emphasize the vital role of passive fire protection in protecting lives and property. It also highlights the importance of ensuring that fire-stopping products are fit for purpose and correctly installed. Specifiers must ensure that each product used offers suitable test or certification evidence for the end use of the product, as outlined, for example, in the ASFP Red Book Guidance Document, Fire Stopping and Penetration Seals for the Construction Sector, 4th Edition, Third-Party Certificated Products. Those installing such products must also understand these issues and be able to demonstrate competency in their installation. Similarly, anyone that commissions or signs off such work should take steps to ensure that any such systems are adequately verified and correctly installed. In keeping with the guidance outlined in Approved Document B of the Building Regulations, the best way of ensuring a product is suitable is to use a third-party certificated product installed by a third-party certificated installer. To be a member of the ASFP, 
contractors must be part of a third-party certification scheme. Get it right. Look for the logo and always specify an ASFP member.